Right now on the UK Rail Network, a lot of rail companies are going through a period of phasing out older trains and bringing in newer ones. There are several factors for this ranging from the train's age, PRM compliance and the leasing costs for older trains being more expensive than buying new ones. One rail company right now in the last 11 years has had to go through a lot of growing pains and frustrations from reliability problems to customer service issues and punctuality issues and of course the biggest one in the last few years and as of right now is replacing their entire fleet and that of course is Greater Angular. So in this video we're going to have a look into Greater Angular's new era of their new train fleet going forward and also looking at some of their older units they are replacing. So let's get into it. Greater Angular at this time is owned by Dutch company Abelio and Japanese firm Mutsi in a 60-40% ownership since March 2017, although the name Greater Angular has been around since 2011. Abelio took over the running of the East Angular franchise after the National Express debacle on the East Coast mainline, which led to them not only being stripped of the East Coast franchise in 2009, but also resulted in them being stripped of the East Angular franchise, which left them with just C2C up until when they eventually sold out off to Trenitalia. As I used to live in Essex up until February 2019, I could tell you that the liveries of National Express from April 2004 to 2010, whether it was One Railway or National Express East Anglia, to be honest, were awful. The 315's One Railway interior looked hideous, like a 60 minute makeover gone bad, and then you had the National Express East Anglia livery which was outside was a bit bland and boring, and then on the inside still, especially on the Class 321s, had the former First Great Eastern look, which was worn down. So fast forward to when the Bayer took, took on the East Angular franchise and rebranded it as Greater Angular, it had so many issues from the get-go. As anyone would know from a football team, when you change managers, many fans expect success immediately, with some big team names like Bayern Munich, Manchester United, Liverpool, Paris Saint-Germain, Real Madrid, Borussia Dortmund, etc. However, in a rail franchise, changeover for passengers because they demand a reliable service, it's not that straightforward and sometimes can be too demanding. Abelia from the get-go had ongoing reliability problems with the 90 sets in particular and I remember a time in December 2011 seeing the Class 90 breaking down on Platform 9 at Stratford first hand and for those on board, whether it's the driver, whether it's the passengers, it must have been very embarrassing. Even their diesel fleet wasn't doing that great either because again they were left in a state that was barely manageable to run them. So for the next few years, Abelio was spent trying to clear up the mess left by National Express and trying to improve their services even when they were branded as Abelio Greater Angular. But by 2016, Abelio did begin to make a turn with improvements in punctuality being 92%, however the customer service feedback still had a long way to go, which at the time was one of the lowest, around 35%. But the turning point came when it was announced that the Bayer would keep the Greater Angular franchise and then decide to make a few changes. So a deal was struck with TfL to transfer the Lee Valley lines, Shenfield to London Liverpool Street services, as well as the Romford to Upminster services, which in part also led to the formation of TfL Rail and the Lee Valley lines and Romford to Upminster becoming part of London Overground. In the short term, in some ways, it actually eased some of the burden and enabled Abelio to focus on their main services, both regional and mainline. But of course, in the long term, TfL be the early foundations, well, stage one to be exact, for the new Crossrail, which eventually is due to become the Elizabeth Line. The turning point would come for Abelio further in August 2016, and with a longer contract being available to work from, they decide to make a decision that would change everything. They decided to renew their entire fleet. So on the regional services, out were the class 153s and 156s and 170s, and in their place would be 14 class 755-3s and 24 class 755-4s. While on both West Angular and Great Eastern main lines, it would be the class 317 around since 1982, and class 321's been around since 1988, being replaced by class 720s. The original order of class 720s at the time were 89.5 class sets, 720-5s, 
and 2210 class sets 720 ones. However, the latter 720 ones will be later revised in September 2020 to 445 class sets to enable them more flexibility, which in some ways was inconvenient last minute change, but in my view, long term is going to be probably a smart move. As for Standard Express and Intercity sets, well, the Class 379s and Class 90s will be replaced by 20 sets of Class 745s, with 10 of them, 745-0s, being for knowledge, while the other 10 being in Standard Express, 745-1s. But there was some controversy about the 745s, not with the trains themselves, but with the bomb stock they were replacing. The Class 379s have only been around since 2011, and replacing something that was still too young to some, made no sense. The Intercity class of 90s, replacing those, well, it was two ways, on one hand, it was obvious, as they weren't as reliable, however, on the other hand, from a historical perspective, replacing them would spell the end of the local hauled knowledge services on the Great Eastern Main Line, which had been around since the early days of the Eastern Counties Railway and the former Great Eastern Railway Steam Era. But for some 90s, it wasn't the end of them, because they would move over to Freightliner, which was needed to replace the Class 8060s. The Class 745s and 755s, being built by Studier in Switzerland and Hungary respectively, are part of Studier's flirt family, and were the first Swiss-built trains in the UK. Although the flirt family fleet itself name has actually been around since 2004. The 745s would be 12 car sets, although two things to note. One, they only have one set of doors per carriage, which sounds to some ridiculous, but one feature is the disabled ramp, which activates at each stop before the doors open and retracts when the doors close before the train leaves. Similar to feature on the 755s, both 3-car and 4-car sets. Well, more about those in a minute. As with the ride on the 745s from my own experience, the ride of the trains, now some say they aren't good, some say they are, However, to me, I admit, yes, they are okay, not perfect, although be advised when it runs over set of points at top speed of 100 miles an hour, the ride can be very bouncy. Also on the flirts, both 745s and 755s, is something that features is the bogey system, that instead of having a separate bogey system per carriage, there are some carriages actually sit on one bogey system, which from a safety perspective is a very clever design. If, say for example, if you look at other examples like TGVs and of course Eurostar Class V73s. However, the only downside is when it comes to maintenance, they're very difficult to disconnect the carriage of the bogey system and especially when you have to replace a bogey system that takes much longer to do. So on to the 755s, unlike their predecessors, they can run both on diesel and electric power. Examples of this in electric mode or either from Ely to Stansted Airport by Cambridge, or from Ipswich to Stowe Market. Although, according to Greater Anglia, one of their original plans in 2016 was a long-term plan to reinstate a direct London Liverpool Street to Lower Stoff service using the 755, which in practice runs from London Liverpool Street to Ipswich in electric mode, then switching to diesel to run to Lower Stoff. However, at this time, it still remains unknown whenever that's going to be reinstated and still no firm date from Greater Anglia when that will happen. So from that, on to the diesel power. So the diesel power on the 755-3s and 755-4s have something unique about them. And yes, and you may have noticed, the engines don't sit underneath the carriages. In fact, they sit in the middle of the train, but will walk through for passengers to pass through between the carriages. In fact, the engines are stored in a power pack of the train, with both being powered by German Joyce 16 litre V8 engines, with two engines being on 755-3s, whilst three power on 755-4s. Two minor things to note, that for example on the Sudbury line, is that both Marks Tay and Sudbury, the 755-3s are too long to fit the platforms, so only two do sets of doors open which in some ways can be inconvenient, but I think has, since they've been entering service, it's something that I think the locals have sort of begun to get used to. The 755 since their introduction in July 2019, yes, I've had their teething problems, mainly software to some exhaust issues with their joyous engines, 
but at least regardless what you make of them, have improved regional services. So that's the flirts. So what about the 720s? Well, the adventure of family right now is the follow-up to the successful Electrostar family by Bombardier, now Alstom. Well, so far, its history has been mixed. The V45, 710, 701s, and even, yes, the 720s as well, have all been kind of snake-bitten by the same software problems with the Trains Management Control System, or TMCS. Whether it's compatible with present signaling systems or electronic disturbance, which has led to numerous delays and even, yes, right now, the new 730s themselves have ended up being held up as well. But sometimes with newer trains, you have to go through that painful barrier to get over, especially when it comes to technology. And whether we like it or not, it's something we all are going to have to get used to. Because there is a saying, yes, technology can make things easy for the driver, but sometimes the technology is way too advanced and can be a complete inconvenience for the driver as well as for the manufacturer itself. The Class 710s or non overgrounds ended in service 18 months later than planned, and despite their problems at the very beginning, in some ways now considered one of the most reliable. As for the Class 345s, have improved journey times on Tier Farewell, however, when it comes to the seating now and facilities, lacking facilities like the 710s, same thing, as part of TFL, they do lack. However, they're more designed for metro operations, not mainline distances, especially long distance in particular. So for the Class 720s, so far at the time of this recording, around two thirds of the 720-5s are in service, with the 44 720-1s still to come, and while yes, there's some teething issues so far, haven't been too bad, although the only frustration passengers are going to have to deal with at the moment is the not uncommon phase of seeing 720-5s running on their own as 5 cars set on a busy route rather than 10 cars. However, in time that should become just a little more than a short term inconvenience. The big thing about the 720s and also applies to the new Grace Rally fleet with the 745s and 755s is the seating design. Now the problem that in the last 10 years in particular for rail companies have to keep the costs down when it comes to ordering new trains that they have. Part of the reason is because the hands are tied by TFT on interior design which has to conform to all the modern day health and safety, fire safety standards, you name it. So when you've got trains right now, like the 700s on Thames Inc or the ITs on Great Western Railway, for example the same noisy complaint I keep hearing constantly all the time is of course the iron board seating. And whilst I admit it's a nuisance on a comfort level in passenger travel, but in the modern era, unfortunately, whether you like it, whether you hate it, just like Marmite, again, it's something we're going to have to get used to. As one managing director for the new East Midlands Railway Class 810 Aurora's um, said in an interview back last September, he said, he was quoted that we're not going back to the comfort days of the HST era, but there's one thing at least based on the interview I noticed at the time was that according to them whether it rings through when the A10 Aurora's do eventually start is that given the limitation of the fire safety requirements that it has to meet that they are going to try and get to as close as possible when it comes to comfort levels even though it won't be exactly like the HSTs were. Anyway so back to greater angular seating. For their new trains, originally they would have gone for the Fenza seating, however after a public consultation and feedback done in September 2017, it was announced that the new trains would be fitted with Kell seating. Now I think the Kell seating is whilst not perfect, but given the limitations, it's actually probably the best thing comfort wise you can get to. The 720s do have onboard toilets and a lot more seating. Although the only limitation is the aisle space, it's very narrow, which means for passengers with buggies and wheelchairs, it can be a big problem. As for the train design itself, the bogey system is a Flex Eco, which is the same type of bogey system used on the Voyagers. The coupling system is a D-Liner, same used on the Voyagers, and yes, even used on the IETs on GWR as well. And unlike the 710s, that are limited to 75 miles an hour, 345 is limited to 90 miles an hour, while the 720s can max out at a top speed of 100 miles an hour. 
Also, the fact is the 720s aren't just on Greater Angular. In fact, in the last few weeks or so, they've started to appear also on C2C, well, 720-6s. When they were originally ordered by C2C, they were ordered originally and designated as Class 711s, which already at order at the time was 6 10-class sets. They in turn will eventually will replace the Class the 387-3s, so for right now, three of them are on, on the Great Western Railway, and likely at the moment, although no confirmation about it, it's likely the other three sets could follow suit eventually in the months to come to move over to Great Western Railway permanently. However, with the 7-11s, eventually would be changed to 720-6s, and like Great Rangit's decision to revise their order, C2C did exactly the same. So, in the end, the fact is C2C will be getting 12 sets of 5 car formation of 720-6s. And in fact, just in the last week or so, they just began testing them with the first two sets, although it was likely it was going to continue for some time, however, since Alston took over Bombardier back in January 2021, I think as long as they have taken all the lessons learnt in ironing out the 345 and 710 issues, and so far with the 720s despite being late, they are slowly but surely taking hold of both the Great Eastern Mainline and West Angular Mainline, and should be able to get onto C2C services pretty much sooner than you think. However, regarding the 701s, they will enter service eventually, however to the frustration of Alstom, SWR, and for those living on the suburban network operated by Southwestern Railway, there's still no clear date for those entering service. So, breeding new trains, yes, bring the average age right down for rail companies, however it does come with a price, and on Greater Angular, it's older trains they place. While some like the 153s, 156s, 170s, and as I've mentioned for the class 90s, have found use elsewhere. The class 153s and 156s have been moved over to Transport for Wales and Eastman's Railway on a temporary basis, for now. Class 170s have been moved over to Transport for Wales and are operating services from places like Marstec, Cardiff Central, Evervale, and Cheltenham Spa. However, in the long term, Transport for Wales are due to overhaul their entire fleet, so the long term future for the 170s remains unknown. The Class 379s first entered service in 2011 for Stansted Express were withdrawn back in February 2022 due to high leasing costs, and as of this recording, all 30 sets they have been stored, although their future is still uncertain. However, the fate for the two of the longest serving trains on Great Wrangler is kind of all but certain. The Class 317s, after retirement from West Angular Mainline, although some may be stored or reserved, however it's likely many will get scrapped. The Class 321s, been in service on the Great Eastern Mainline since 1988, and the ex-Northern set Class 322s, having been around since 1991, ironically the same year as Stansted Express launch, are slowly being withdrawn, although the final date of withdrawal for them is still unknown. Some will be converted for new development for future hydrogen trains, some will be converted to postal trains, however for the remainder, including the Renata sets, the future is still uncertain, although like the Class 317s, likely many will be probably scrapped. When Great Wrangler completes its full fleet replacement, it will make it one of the youngest average age train fleets to operate on the UK rail system, although that's likely going to be succeeded by Mersey Rail with their new class 777s, replacing the class 507s and 508s pretty soon, and eventually be the same with Air and ER, when the class 91s are eventually withdrawn from service, although still no estimated final date, but it's likely to be either late 2022, or likely sometime in next late spring 2023. As one year ends on Greater Angler, the next one will be critical, and whether the new trains are long-term successes, well, for me, straight up, only time will tell. So, I want to hear from you. What do you think about Greater Angler's new era? Do you like their new train fleet? What memories do you have of their former train fleet? Let me know in the comments below. And you can leave a like, share or subscribe for more content. And also on my channel, as well as my second channel, coming soon. And I'm not joking about this, and it has been kind of uh, noted for some time. Yes, that's right, Plane Spotting will be coming soon. And to those who supported my channel over the last 
nearly five years coming up this summer. Thank you guys so much for the support. It doesn't go unnoticed and I totally appreciate it. And until my next video, see you next time. Bye guys.